we're going to get into our midseason NFL award picks. Like I said earlier in the show, I do have our preseason picks pulled up for comparison as we go through these. Some of them were, I, I, I'm sticking with some of mine. Some of them are like so far gone out the window. <laughs> it's like, dang, I can't believe it fell that way. But Thanks. it happens. That's what happens. You, you're never going to be able to predict anything right in any sport. That's part Just, of the game. That's why I don't do futures bets, bro. Because right. you don't know what happens, bro. Bro, and the odds <laughs> don't be feeling like, you feel like you got to put up like, three four hundred dollars to get like meaningful bread out and you have to wait the whole season the so, whole like, season and right. everything can change like nah bro i need the odds to be like something crazy for me to be able to bet futures bro like could you imagine you got somebody that's a front runner for mvp it's like four games left in carson went season jalen hurts front last runner year. right front runner for mvp get hurts with like five games left yeah now you now gotta sit done. here you sitting here looking at your five hundred dollar bet and it's just waiting pending. You know it's not going to hit. Bro, that's the worst. Yeah, that would piss me off. Facts. Let's get into it. Um, let's start with Coach of the Year. Um, I'll go first since I know you started off the power rankings. My preseason pick for Coach of the Year was Dan Campbell. And I'm sticking with it. I think he still has a very fair case to win it. Um, he's got that Detroit team playing phenomenally. Um, I would run through a brick wall for Dan Campbell right now. <laughs> Um, they're sitting at seven and two um, in sole possession of the NFC North, um, which aside from the, the Vikings being on this crazy hot streak that they're on right now would be a pretty clear runaway for them in the division. Um, I don't really have faith that the Vikings can catch them, but um, either way, look, this, this Lions team is one of the best teams in the NFC. Um, they're playing great. They're finding ways to win games. This offense looks explosive. The defense steps up when they need to. Um, so, so I'm sticking with Dan Campbell as my coach of the year. Yeah, <clears throat> definitely a solid pick for sure. Um, my coach of the year before the season was Doug Peterson with the Jacksonville Jaguars. And if I had to like season ended today, I think it also would be Dan Campbell. Um, but I still, I, I have hope for Doug Peterson. I think the Jags, I got to really look at their schedule, uh, moving forward, but they're still with, even with the loss, I think with what, six and three. They're six and three. Like, I don't got hope for them, but they are six and three. Yeah. They, I mean, they could, honestly, they haven't been playing as I thought they would play. I, I didn't think their offense isn't playing as like great as I thought it was going to look. If ETN was not going crazy the last couple of weeks, like he had been, this would be a wildly different record, bro. 100%. But I, that's why I say I got to see their schedule because even, right now they're still 6-3. and three. I don't know yeah. what their schedule looks like. If they have an easy schedule going down the stretch, which I'm pretty sure they do, they can still rack up a bunch of wins and have a good enough record at the end to where like he might get some nods. But if I had to really pick, he he wouldn't be – obviously he wouldn't be the favorite for me. It would probably be Dan Campbell, and if not Dan Campbell, I'd say Nick Sirianni just because the Eagles still winning games 8-1. and one. Winning close games, a lot of you see a lot of teams that can't pull out those close games. It feel like they're they're winning every single close game. So you gotta give them the nod to I'd say those two people. Yeah, I, I think that that's fair. Um, let's go on to to comeback player of the year. You looked up the odds before this one. Said Demar Hamlin is still the odds on favorite, which has not recorded a stat this year. I don't know if you can win the award legally without playing. <laughs> right. Like, again, I'm not story aside, like, yes, he deserves the award a thousand times out of a thousand. Right. But, like, I feel like you have to play Let's be <laughs> for, for the real, award bro. to, to <laughs> So, again, I'm going to ride with my preseason pick still, which is Russell Wilson. Like, the Broncos very sneakily, like, a little two-game win streak. <laughs> beat the mm-hmm. Chiefs. Beat the Packers. Um, about to play the Bills tonight on Monday Night Football, who we know the Bills have had an up-and-down season. It's in Buffalo. Hey, man, you mess around with that one. The league got to be on notice at that point. They can't fly under the radar after that. And if they win that game, look, they're sitting at four and six, uh, right? Or no, four and five. They'd be tied with the Chargers for third place, one game back of Vegas for second place, or half game back of Vegas for second place in the AFC West. It's not a bad spot, and Russ's numbers this year have been much improved from last season. Um, he's sitting at 1,600 yards on 66% completion percentage, 16 touchdowns, four interceptions. I don't even know if he threw 16 touchdowns last year, to be honest with you. I don't he think might he not. did. I don't think he did. <laughs> I mean, let, me, let me pull that up. Um, 
2022, he threw for exactly 16 touchdowns last year. So halfway through the season, we are at his touchdown mark. He threw for 11 picks last year. Um, he's only thrown for four at this point in the season. Over six, uh, almost six percent higher um, in his completion percentage, um, and just around half of the yardage already from last year. So, um, and an uptick of was this like sixteen or seventeen in in a quarterback rating. Um, so I'm I'm comfortable saying Russ, partially because, like I said, when we did this in the preseason, it could only go up because last year was bad. So That's if facts. comeback player is just about you had a bad year and then you had a better year. Hey, he's doing it. So I'm I'm riding with that pick to at least hold on to two of my preseason selections because the rest of them are, are pretty much chalk. Fair enough, man. You, you better be. I, I'm not holding on to none of my preseasons. Like, all of mine is done for. But with a good reason, though. Like, even this one. Like, all right, my comeback player of the year. Clearly, you see, I was riding with the Jaguars because my comeback player of the year was Calvin Ridley. Yeah. I've been trying to <laughs> trade him in fantasy for weeks. I'll take him. I ain't paying nothing for him, but I'll take him. <laughs> but nah, it's, it's, it's been, uh, it was Calvin really. And then I also had Lamar. Um, but I feel like actually Lamar is kind of graduating to the MVP conversation. I know, I know they lost um, this, this past weekend, but he's still in that conversation because no one's actually running away with it. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit more. But for comeback player of the year, I actually have Tua because he was hurt a lot, especially down the stretch last year. Choice, so I do yeah. have Tua. Um, I believe he's third in the league in passing yards. He's first in passing touchdowns. And for, I believe it's QBR, he's – it's tough because they have all these, like, receivers that threw one touchdown or one pass and now they have a perfect QBR. But I think <laughs> as far as eligible, like, actual quarterbacks, he's second yeah. behind Brock Purdy. So mm-hmm. he's playing well. Numbers are great. Obviously, they haven't really beat, um like, those good teams. But as far as comeback player of the year, or like, I don't think that's going to really hold no weight. Like, that was more like a – MVP conversation thing. Like if he was beating right. those teams, he'd be in that MVP convo. But n- because he's not, I believe he'll uh, he'll have a good chance to win comeback player of the year. Yeah, I think I, I, that's probably a more reasonable selection at this point. Like Russ, I think might, will probably have to do a little bit more to beat that out. Also, because like two his injuries were so prominent, um, mm-hmm. and he is playing like. That Miami Dolphins offense that like we've talked about is playing at one of the best levels um, in the NFL, um, and he's orchestrating that. So definitely, definitely a good pick. Um, I think we talked about this a little bit before, but I, I don't know if it qualifies as much because he only played two games in 2022. He only threw 68 passes. Josh Dobbs, hey. Hey, man. If, if they had like a breakout award, Facts. that would be the one. That would be the one clearing away. Clearing Bro. away. He looks good, bro. Like he looks like he don't. I mean, I'm a Steelers fan. We drafted Josh Dobbs. He didn't mm-hmm. look like this, bro. I'm telling you, I'm ha- I'm so happy for him though. Yeah, he, se- he seems legitimately like a like a good person, like a good mm-hmm. guy. So I'm I'm happy for him. But like, bro, it's shocking me, bro. Like he, where did this come from? Did like, you see what he said about the day that he got traded in that uh, interview? No, nah, I don't think I've seen it. He talked to Jonathan Gannon like the day before, and he was like. We're going to start you. And then on Monday, he was like in a press conference. Jonathan Gannon said they're going to start. What's his name? Clayton Toon, the rookie. Mm -hmm. They're like, because we're gearing up for Kyler. And he was like, oh, okay. So I guess I'm not starting. And then Jonathan Gannon told him, you know, broke it down wider, you know, bringing in Clayton because they're about to whatever start Kyler, but they're going to keep Josh there. He's not going to get traded. Mm -hmm. And then his agent calls him that night and is like, hey, you know, you might be moved. And he was like, "Ah, I don't know. They just told me they're not going to move me, but this is a business. I know how that go. And he said the next morning he got the call from his agent. He getting shipped back to Minnesota. And it was like they just like flat lied to his face twice. That's crazy, bro. How they could just do that, everyone? Just no get no, don't feel no bad. Because all they, all they got to say, that's a business. Right. A business. But as soon as the players start acting up or demanding trade outs, he, he a diva. He this, he that. Right. You know? Yeah, That's, he's not a, not a team player. Right, yeah, it's just so crazy, bro. Sick. So, yeah, so shout, shout out to Josh Dobbs. Definitely. The next one I, we got is Offensive Rookie of the Year. Um, and I imagine this is like – this might be the most cut and dry award. Like It is. I don't even have a lot to say because I'm going to save it for another award. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> C.J. Stroud. Yeah. And, like, <clears throat> I'm just going to, for those of y'all watching or listening, make sure y'all understand how ridiculous – this stat line is after nine games for a rookie quarterback, 
He has 2,626 yards. You said that's that was that top, that's top three in the NFL. Second, Second in the NFL. 15 touchdowns, two interceptions. He has a 101 quarterback rating. And don't get me wrong, though. The whole two interceptions is not like he's dinking and dunking. We said it like he's second in the league in passing yards, and he's, as far as qualified quarterbacks, third in yards per attempt. So he's slinging it. It's, he's not dinking and dunking. No. He's launching it. So his The biggest thing every time I've watched him play this year, live, went back and watched the All-22, he has the decision-making that you would expect from a – seven, eight, nine year. Bro, there are experienced veteran quarterbacks that he right now today would take over as a decision maker easily, bro. He just feels like he understands the risk reward for every single pass so much better mm -hmm. and still knows when it's time to hit the home <clears throat> run. Like it's yes. like you said, it's not like he sacrifices that and he just becomes a check down merchant. Like, no, when he's got to throw the, the 40 yard pass on a rope, it's on a rope on time. Like, Bro, this dude, tie game against the Bengals, minute 30 left. I trusted him to come through, which is great. Like, before anything. Game I'm like, nine. And, and, and literally, and it was like right before he threw like his second, only second mistake of the year. We threw a pretty bad pick. And I was like, he's going to bounce back. And I think he will get them at least in field goal range. And he came through. Like, but he's not He's not a rookie, bro. He's I literally on pace for the best rookie quarterback season ever. Like, it's ridiculous. It, it's crazy, bro. It's crazy. And then also when you think about it, aside, like, Nico Collins has been there. Tank Dell is a rookie. But, like, Noah Brown, who's come on as of late, Robert Woods, Dalton right. Schultz. Schultz. Mm -hmm. These was, like, I'm not throwaway is the wrong word, but, like, at least Noah Brown, Dalton Schultz, like, Cowboys were, it, like. That is kind of the right word. Right. Like, y'all could walk. Right. Mm -hmm. Like. Robert Woods, the vet, like he's been tossed around. Mm -hmm. Like he making it happen. Facts. With guys that apparently these other teams didn't want. And Tank Dell is looking like an absolute stud. They're going to be a crazy dynamic duo. Him, between him and Nico and Tank Dell and Damian Pierce, I'm hoping, please, <laughs> <laughs> uh, for, for dynasty fantasy purposes. But, um, bro, but at least between the three of them, bro, they have got something cooking in Houston. Um, like, yeah, CJ Stroud is him. We'll, we'll get to that a little bit later. Mm -hmm. Um, who do you have for defensive rookie of the year? Uh, mine is Jalen Carter. It's kind of a runaway, like, he's just been like, I my preseason was Will Anderson because I thought that Jalen Carter, with all the other defensive linemen that the Eagles have, with the other 12 all pro defensive linemen, it seemed like they got that he was. Like, not saying that he wasn't going to be good, but it was just like, all right, he kind of had to find his way, find like. He was going to be in the rotation, obviously, but it wasn't like he was going to have those standout numbers and really stand out because the defense as a whole is going to be so good, especially the defensive line. But he said, nah, bro, I don't care. Like, I'm the best one of, out of all of us, pretty much. So he, he's been amazing. Um, I don't have the stats in front of me, but, like, obviously he's been great. Um, honestly, I haven't checked on Will Anderson's numbers for the most part. But He hasn't I, come on fully as of yet. Um, yeah. They were even talking about it on the broadcast in that – um. In the uh, the Bucks game that they played, mm -hmm. um, so it's I mean like it's not every rookie comes on at, at the same rate, um, right. but like you said, I I had Jalen Carter there. At, I didn't remember. I, yeah, Jalen Carter was one of my picks for defensive rookie of the year. I had him or Joey Porter. Mm -hmm. um, shout, Joey Porter's having Joey a great Porter's season been, too. Yeah, he been hooping. He been doing. Uh, he can't tackle for nothing though. But coverage wise, he's been solid. That is true. But like some some corners at least give you something, bro. He just can't tackle at all. Hey. More the corner giving you something. I got Jalen Carter here <laughs> as the pick, and I think he probably will win. And look, the fact I, I know we talked about this before, like him having four sacks, not just with all of the other people that he has to share pass rush reps with, mm -hmm. but to have four sacks halfway through the season as an interior lineman, that's hard to do, bro. That's mm -hmm. hard to do. Like we did, did they just uh, one of the broadcasts were talking about how Quentin Williams has half a sack this year, and that's yeah. not really an indicative how he's having a great season. He has the pressures, he has the hurries, he's being a run like he's a menace up front. It's mm -hmm. Just hard to get sacks when you're yeah. like that's the easiest position to double team. Like you're playing a two 
two eye, head up on a nose, three tech, whatever. Like those are easier to double team than wide DN stand up edge rushers. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah, four sacks is is hard to beat. But getting back to my original point, talking about corners that could hit, bro. I think he's second or third in the the current odds for defensive rookie of the year. Devin Witherspoon. Hey, I, look, I ain't seen number twenty one in the Seahawks uniform hit like that since Cam Chancellor. Facts. And at, as a corner at that, like to have a guy, not sometimes he's lined up in the nickel. Like to have a slot corner, like come in the box and play the run and it's not even like uh he's an ankle tackle guy he's a dot nah. like no i'm head up mm, like in the hole Fact. you want to run a, a tunnel screen you bet bro pray pray i'm getting blocked because if you not i'm taking your head off you saw rondell uh get lit up by with his phone bro bro he if like coverage he's been good like not the greatest um but bro or I feel like 40 tackles this point in the year uh, from a rookie corner. That's a lot. From a, yeah, from, from a rookie corner, for sure. That's great. That's like on great. pace for 80 tackles as a corner, as a rookie, that's a lot of tackles, bro. That's a man. Um, they, the Seahawks be finding them, bro. Like, they be right. finding them. They had Reek one like last like, year. Like, they, yeah. bro, they, they secondaries, whoever scouting. Okay. Right. Y'all He's doing his one. job. <laughs> Y'all on, on one. He's doing um, his thing. But yeah, Jalen Carter, I think he'll probably be the, the guy to win the award. Like we said, the impact, I think, honestly, being having this much impact with the people around him almost elevates his case. Like, yeah, to be exactly. able to still stand out amongst guys like Fletcher Cox and Brandon Graham and um, Jordan Davis. Jordan Davis. I almost said Nolan Smith. I get the two of them confused. Um, but yeah, like with all the other guys on that D line is to still make this kind of impact. You got to tip your hat to that. hundred percent. Now we get down to the nitty gritty, the top three awards. Uh, you want to start with, you want to start with offensive player of the year or defensive player of the year? Let's do, we just did it. Let's go, let's go offense. Cause we just did defensive rookie. So okay. we can do offense. Are you want, am I saying mine or you want to say yours? You could go first. Okay. So mine. It's really a three-person race, but I have Tyreek Hill. Okay. Now, I got Tyreek Hill just because, one, he's leading the league in receiving yards and receiving touchdowns. Um, And his, the impact on the field is ridiculous. Like, you just see his speed is such a threat, bro, that, like, it opens stuff up for other people. Um, Like, you, bro, even with a safety over the top, the amount of time I've watched this guy run past the corner and run past the safety. It's not even a top, route. He's just going. He's just running, and he's burning both of them. It's That's crazy. what he gave me. Like, bro, <laughs> usually when people do stuff like that, it's like, are oh, you getting? You got the leverage. You got him to bite. It's a post corner, mm -hmm. little double move. It's like, I'm running a go. I'm just gonna run inside leverage past the corner, and then and, and, and I'm just gonna yeah, run right? past the safety. Like, you can't it's, coach that, bro. Bro, it's like they forget that he's Tyreek and like play it like a normal person. And he just flies by. And as a fantasy owner, I love it so much. Oh, it's, yeah. It's so great to see. But no, as a, as a real-life like football watcher, bro, it's ridiculous how fast this guy is and how much it opens stuff up. And it opens up the whole playbook, bro. Cause And especially because all the motion and everything that, that they do in Miami, it's tough to see what's coming, bro. It's ridiculous. And then you add in all the other speedsters. Yeah, the offense is just crazy. That's a whole other topic. But Tyreek, having a great season. Um, already has a thousand something yards, but nine, eight, nine games in, which is crazy. It was one. I don't know what his pace is now, but on one point he was on pace for two thousand. He still might be on pace. I don't know. He had a couple like couple so so games recently, but he he's been amazing, bro. And then in parentheses, I have um, I have CMC because mm -hmm. what he does for that 49ers offense, the fact that he's able to stand out with so many stars around him and clearly be the best option there clearly be like the best offensive player is huge. And then of course, AJ Brown, like there's nothing more I can say to that. Like he's a man amongst boys, bro. He's right. bullying these corners. So, <laughs> but my pick is Tyreek Hill. Yeah. It, it's de that. That's definitely the three man race right now is Tyreek CMC and AJ. All three of them have very valid cases. Like I really can't fault anybody. I think, in a lot of people's eyes, AJ would probably be the furthest removed and, like, I guess understandable. But, um, like, I, I would not fault anybody for having either one of them um, as their pick. Personally, right now, I have CMC 
um, leading the league right now in rushing. Um, I think it's like almost 750 yards, nine rushing touchdowns. He just broke his streak of always scoring. It was dated back like almost two seasons or something crazy, right? Like ridiculous. It's like 17 games. Yeah. Um, so basically almost a full NFL regular season spanning two seasons of getting a touchdown in every game. He was so consistent. That broke in a game where they did not need him to score at all um, against the Jaguars. But just the threat that he is on the ground and in the air, like we've known that from him for obviously since his time in Carolina. But it feels like Kyle Shanahan really like unlocked him to his full potential. And when him, like when this 49ers team is fully healthy, when you've got CMC out there with IU, with Debo, with Kittle, there's just so much that goes on. And all of that is predicated off of the fact that CMC is so versatile. They can do so many different things with him. And there's so much that you have to worry about. You cannot just be concerned with him in the run game because he is such a good pass catcher. He could go out and run routes and beat your best corner on routes. Mm-hmm. Like, y'all know who his dad is? And you know he could run routes. Nice. Um, so, like, just the versatility, how much of a – how much – his presence does for this team um, and how much he showed, like, I don't want to say shoulders a load because it is a collective effort team wide for this 49ers team. We spent a lot of time talking about how much talent they have on both sides of the ball. Um, but really just his impact on the ground and in the air um, is, is a lot for me. But like I said, you, you cannot fault anybody for having Tyreek or AJ Brown in this slot because all, all of them are breaking records <laughs> in this season. Uh, mm-hmm. Tyreek, Tyreek is on pace. Him, him and AJ Brown, right, are like on pace to potentially both have two thousand yards. AJ is um, like, like only a maybe like fifty some yards behind Tyreek. Let me, I can look it up now. But like, he was not far behind in like uh, receiving yards. All right, and I think he had set the record for most one hundred and fifty yard games consecutively. It was like six weeks or something like that. One twenty five. It was one twenty five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. He's only he's literally seventy yards behind Tyreek. So they both right. had. A, he's at a thousand and five. Tyreek's at a thousand seventy six. Right. And it's funny because it's like Tyreek's is so much of like get him the ball in space and go and like find different ways to get him. AJ Brown is like, I'm about to run a big boy post. <laughs> throw, it up. throw me the ball. I don't care. <laughs> him, him, him. I don't care who's here. I'm catching the ball. Bro. <laughs> Completely yeah. different ways to get to almost the same amount of receiving yards. Yeah, it's um, crazy. But yeah, e- any of those options are, are fair points. I, I just would mean CMC right now. That's absolutely fair. You cannot, like I said, cannot go wrong with any one of those guys. Um, <clears throat> going on a depoy, this one hurts me, man, because I just I try to be as unbiased as possible. But if I had to pick someone, season ended today for me, it'd be Miles Garrett. Um, just because I mean the stats are there, and for, honestly, I have I don't even have, I know the stats are there, but I'm not looking at the stats. If you just watch the games. The impact that he has on the game, it is ridiculous, bro. Like the Colts game, where I believe he had a couple sacks, had a force fumble, fumbles. blocked a field goal. He like like bro, he's every like he's bro literally all over the field, and like you, the impact is felt. You can clearly see it, and the fact that he's Manning or like leading the charge for like one of the best defenses. At one point, I believe a couple weeks ago, it was like one of the best defenses in the past, like, 50 years. It was, like, some wild stat, but, like, they were first in absolutely everything. Like, the defense was insane, still is insane, even though they've given up, you know, some big games. Still an insane defense. And the fact that he's leading the charge, like, I feel like he has to be the deep boy right now. Um, But then I had to throw my man T.J. Wyatt in there. Like, come on, man. Like, he's still doing his Fair thing. Option. I'm going to say, the numbers are still there. Like, it's not like, you know, he's far behind. Like, bro, he's still there. The numbers are there. Our, de- our defense is playing solid. Um, not as good as the Browns, but still, like, there's games where T.J. Watt is, like, winning us the game, like, by himself, like, carrying us to a victory, even against the Browns, that game against the Browns. There's a lot of plays T.J. Watt made that just, like, impacted the game so much. So, to me, I'd lean Miles Garrett just because the defense as a whole is a little bit better, but T.J. Watt's right there. Yeah, I, I honestly have Miles Garrett as well um, for a lot of those same reasons, like, what really gets it for me, and like it's nothing to take away from TJ Watt, Miles Garrett's versatility to rush from any spot yeah. across the defensive line. Like, obviously, the clip that went viral of him of sitting here, like doing dribble moves before 
the the play starts, but he's head up over the center, mm-hmm. like, and also being dominant off the edge. Like again, that's di- we just talked about how it's difficult to do for like to have quarterback pressures from an interior line perspective. So much of that goes to those edge rushing guys to be able to go and line up head up over the center as a nose or in a two tech, three tech, whatever. I mean, two eye or three tech. Um, and be able to get those kind of pressures, get sacks. We talked about the forced fumbles. You talked about the the blocked field goal. Like he is on another level um, defensively this year, and he's leading one of the best defensive units. So I tip my cap there again. TJ Watt is definitely like a valid answer and could be deserving of the award. But right now, I have to give the edge to Miles Garrett too. Yeah. 100%. And you know what's funny? Completely side note, I want to see Max Crosby on a good defense. So I feel like every I time do I too. watch Raiders games, he's like the only he's person wreaking there. Wreaking havoc, bro. He's like, destroying everything, but it's like the deep, everything, literally everything else around him sucks. Like the yeah. everything, but he's just the one guy that's just like going crazy. So I, I would love to see him on like a really good defense. Yeah, he he just be going crazy like it really feels like he's in the backfield every play that I've watched, especially like all the Raiders primetime games. Yeah. He's in the backfield. It feels like every single pass play, every, every drop back he's pressuring. He's everywhere, all over the court, all over the field. So absolutely. So the big one, man, Mm -hmm. MVP. All right. For me personally, this honestly, when you really look at it, this is might be like one of the toughest ones because I don't think there's a clear there is cut no winner. clear cut. There is no clear cut for me. If the season ended today and I had to pick one, knowing how they do the MVP award, for me, it'd be Jalen Hurts. All right, I the reason why it's Jalen Hurts because one, I don't even think his, his passing stats have been too too crazy. Um, obviously, you know, he's a uh, rushing quarterback. So, like, you got to add in the rushing and the passing. Like, rushing numbers, I'm pretty sure his rushing number is fine, especially touchdowns with the brotherly shove. Like, I think he has, mm-hmm. like, seven touchdowns or something like that on the ground. But Crazy. the fact that they're winning, they are the, have the best record in the NFL. I believe they're 8-1. and one. Mm-hmm. They've beaten really good teams. They've won a lot of close games, and when they win the close games, it's on the back, on the arm, I should say, of Jalen Hurts. Like, he makes a lot of those big-time throws late into the games, like the throws A.J. Brown, the throws of Devontae Smith. Like, even in games where he's not playing the best, he will make up for it because he'll make one throw, one big throw at the end of a game, and it'll have you like, damn, that's a really good throw. So they're, they're winning because of him. They're winning the close games because of him. Um, he has made a, a little bit more as far as like mistakes wise this season, but again, it hasn't been hurting them so far this season besides the one Jets game. He's just playing, he's been playing great. Like I said, no one's really stuck out and he has the best record. So I, that's why I just lean Jalen Hurst. Yeah, you can't, you really can't fault that. I have two guys here. I also have Jalen Hurts for all of the same reasons. A and one record. He's been playing great. Um, on the air and the ground. And, like, look, especially the last couple of weeks, like, you definitely see that the knee has been bugging him. Um, mm-hmm. He hasn't had oh, the same Oh, and playing hurt. Of, yes, that's another one, yep. Right. Hasn't had the same kind of burst in the open field, but doesn't hurt the touch push, and those mm-hmm. touchdowns do rack up. Like you said, seven on the ground this year um, on top of, well, I think, 15 or 16 in the air. Um He's facilitating what is looking like a generational season from A.J. Brown. Their offense, despite losing their offensive coordinator, hasn't looked the most fluid, but the playmakers are there. They make the plays when they need to, um, and they can still pour on teams, and it's only getting better like, as the season goes on. They still have their moments where, like, this does not look as good as it did last year, but, like, it's definitely much improved. Like, I know we had the conversation early on about what they look like after, like, week two, week three, where it's like, yeah, they're 3-0, and but – Three and zero is like looking shaky. They look better than they did then, and I'm expecting yeah. like as we get later into the year, they'll really start to gel and mesh, and we'll see them be really comfortable. And also, probably have <clears throat> him, you know, hopefully back a little bit healthier from whatever is you know kind of nagging him with that knee injury. Um, and you know, he starts to really you know get a little bit more comfortable being dynamic in the open field again, and um, kind of being the punishing tough runner that he is. So, I have him as one of the two people for MVP. But I'm here to plant the flag for the C.J. Stroud MVP case mm-hmm. today. 
Dog team. Um, for the, all the same reasons that we listed him for, for runaway favorite for offensive rookie of the year. Um, but really, like, stat-wise, it's there. Like, we just talked about the, the touchdown-interception ratio is crazy. He's second in passing yards. We just talked about the weapons that he has. Coming into the season, nobody would have put in them, like, I don't even know if you would have put them top 10, maybe not even top 16, like, cores, receiving cores across the league. Mm -hmm. um, and so coming in with that, their O-line still has is not – performing at a high level their running game has been pretty stale the entire season Damian Pierce has not really been able to ever get it going Devin Singletary has looked a little bit better the last couple of weeks um, since Damian Pierce has been out but even still I would not say that's something that they can really lean on so so much of that pressure is being put on CJ Stroud to make this offense go and it's going like at a high rate and we talked about it earlier the the poise, the decision making is at such a high level. He's not making those rookie mistakes that you would expect. He's not making the general mistakes that you would expect a lot of even veteran quarterbacks to make. Um, he's got this team as of right now today, November 13th. They would be in the wild card game of the AFC playoffs. Um, and they've got some marquee wins under their belt. Like, like you just said, they went in down through or tie game right with Cincinnati with a minute 30 left and went down and scored a game winning field goal. And Cincinnati was one of the hottest, may might've been the hottest team in the NFL. Mm -hmm. um, like Joe Burrow has slung shot himself into MVP conversations because of his play. Um, so for him to go toe to toe with Joe Burrow in that game, and it was a great back and forth game. Like that just shows the level of poise and production that he has and just the comfortability that he has. And what I think, is fair to say is not the best of situations. It's not like he just walked into a, a tailor-made offense with this great old line or, you know, he's got guys around him that are like, you know, household names. Like if you would have told somebody before the season that this is what the Texans team was doing with Nico Collins, Tank Dell, Noah Brown, and Dolan Schultz, they would be like, ah, I don't believe you. And he's making it happen, bro. And it's hard to say that there are too many quarterbacks Strictly right now, this season, playing better than him. And because of all of that, that's, again, placed on him. And he's producing, and he's got them above 500 and in a playoff spot. And, in you know, let me pull up their upcoming schedule, actually, because I want to see what they, they've got coming up. Because um, they're not in the toughest division. Like, they've got Cardinals. Jags, Broncos, Jets. They got some winnable games. Titans, Damn. Browns, Titans again. And then they end the season with the Colts. That's this could end game. up being a very good regular season record for them. They mess around. It could, like, bro, this could maybe be one or two losses max rest of the season. Mm -hmm. Like, you could be looking at, what was that, 11 and, 11 and 6? I mean, they got so, they would have to. Like the, the Jags, the Jags is tough. Jets Car defense is tough. E Browns even the Cardinals tough. with with Kyler back is going to be a little bit too. difficult now. I say that, yeah, like you said, Jets defense. I don't know. Aaron Rodgers might be back. You know, never know. Yeah, <laughs> hey, bro, I stashed him in fantasy. If somebody dropped him. So, hey, you, hey, <laughs> I hope you never know. <laughs> I'll be back though. But um, that, and uh, I mean, I see what you mean though. They could they could string together some wins. Right, but look, for, forget the predictions aside, bro. Sitting right now, five and four, with what he's done this year, I think he has a very fair argument to be the MVP. Like, you could that that just constructed the whole argument. Like, I, I'm not hearing that he is at least not worthy of being in the discussion. If you don't have him as your MVP, I'm not gonna be like, oh my gosh, what are we talking about here? Like, like you said, there's no clear cut person for the award. Um, but I think he has a very real and legitimate argument to be in that discussion and is worthy of winning the award because of that. Yeah, 100%. I, I just think the main thing with me is one, like the way he's playing as a rookie is like, like you, you said it before, like he's playing and the decisions he's making is better than a lot of veterans that's been in the league for a minute. And the, like the clutch factor, like the, the, the bucks game with barely any time on the clock going down and having a game winning drive. Then, Against Joe Burrow, against like you said, the hottest team in the league, 
like going down and getting a game winning field, like game winning drive to get a field goal. Like, but that takes like poise, it takes confidence, that takes just pure talent. And like, you just got it, bro. Like, they, I, there's no, there's not 10 quarterbacks I'd rather have than, than TJ Stroud. I can't name 10 quarterbacks I'd rather have right now. Right now, you could probably cut that down to like five. There are, like, like honestly, and especially if you add if you add in like the he is gonna get better part of it, like right. There's not, man. It's, it's, just know it's not a lot of quarterbacks I take over. There's probably a right. handful I take over right now. So absolutely, completely understand. Like good pick. And I think people need to like start taking that pick more serious. So I think a lot of people say it like. But yeah, he's playing great, like MVP. Like, no, like legitimately, right? He's like actually in the conversation, not like a haha. Like, no, he's legit in the conversation. After the Bucks game, I think a lot of people were like, All right, we're like week seven, week eight here. Like, the touchdown to interception ratio is still crazy. The yards are like top of the league, they're winning games. Like, yeah, you know, he can be in the conversation after the Bengals game. Like, Vegas is aware, yeah, he's facts. he's bumped up to I think he's seventh now in MVP odds. Too low. Only people in front of him is Joe Burrow, Josh Allen, Lamar Jackson, Tua, Jalen, and Mahomes. There's no reason for Tua – not Tua. There's no reason for Joe Burrow to be ahead of him. There's no – there is a reason for Patrick Mahomes because he's Mahomes and their record is a lot better. But Burrow, don't they have the same record. They have the same record. Joe Burrow played like three, two good games, like three good games because he was hurt, hurt to start a season. He just beat him. There's zero reason why Burrow should be ahead if it's not named – value alone bro i think he has i i wouldn't put mahomes case above his only reason like that's not that's not saying that right that's not saying that mahomes is like i'm not not saying he's better than mahomes not even close i'm just right if we're talking strictly off of what they're putting in terms of an mvp case together like chiefs defense has been doing a lot of heavy lifting for that team this year Mm -hmm. and like some of that could just be game plan like teams are just not trying to let we saw it. They're out here triple teaming Kelsey. They don't have a ton of other weapons on the outside. Like Mahomes needs someone to throw to. I'm not saying it's his fault, but like the that's MVP case point. just right. The MVP right, and they're what seven and two. Yeah. Fine, like that's winning football. And I, I, I think Mahomes would agree. Like he wouldn't care. He would rather have the team success than the individual success of mm-hmm. winning the MVP award. So talking about the individual case, I think Stroud has a better case than Mahomes right now. Yeah, so it's a, definitely a real case. Um, one more person I did want to just mention slightly uh, is, is your guy, <laughs> Dakota Prescott. Hey, hey listen, man. The numbers say, are there. Say say what you want about Dak. He's been playing great, especially, I believe, especially these past couple weeks, bro. He's been playing insane. Let me pull, let me pull up their schedule. Mm-hmm. But Beat up them bad teams, man. Let's go. But <laughs> but the, but the, right, but the thing is though, the thing is, let me pull up Dallas schedule. The thing is, even in games that they lost, besides the Niners game, like all right, put it this way, like the Eagles game. He played. Well, he, I think played, he, played he, he played great. I I don't like. I saw people immediately try to go and pin that loss on Dak, and I'm like, there's no way we're watching the same game, bro. No, no way we're watching the same game. Mm-hmm. Dak made so many plays in that game for us to even be in that position. That's the Dak Prescott that I know he can be consistently and can bring this team to places that it hasn't been in a very long time. Mm-hmm. Like that is the Dak Prescott that that can be. So he definitely has been much improved. I still do not love the play calling, but like him being able to get off script, scramble, get outside the pocket, make plays. Like, that is when Dak Prescott has always been at his best. Um, and he's been doing that a lot more the back half of this part of the season. Mm-hmm. Um, so I, I think that, yeah, look, bro, the numbers are there. I've seen people start to be like, hey, like you said, there's no clear-cut favorite. We're just looking at who's putting up good numbers with a good record. you got to put Dak in the conversation. He's Six and three, and he's got yeah. the numbers. He's definitely in the conversation. It's not like he's – I, I get it, like, the narrative, like, they only beat bad teams. But, like, he's played well even in the games that they lost besides – I mean, the Cardinals game, he didn't play great. Obviously, the Niners, they didn't play great. I don't – oh, and then the Eagles. Like, he's play, he played well in the Eagles game. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, I just feel like, like you said, if we're going strictly off of numbers and record, you got to at least be in a combo. I'm not saying he's the favorite, but he got to be in a combo. Definitely. No, definitely has to be. Um, that's going to do it for our midseason awards, though. Um, we'll come back to those at the end of the season when they yeah. announce the picks, <laughs> uh, or maybe we'll do an end season pick and then we'll 
we'll get to compare <laughs> every single stop along the way how close we were. Uh, but no, I think this is the first time in a while that MVP. I feel like at at least by this point in the year, there's like a clear cut. Not even necessarily just a front runner, but at least a race. But like, again, yeah, like, like a I just, two or three people raced at this point. Stroud being at seven, like all the guys in front of him, they have cases. Like, and there are people that are going. Like Mahomes still being the betting favorite says a lot. Like you, you know, you know what the problem is. The problem is the fact that it's a quarterback award. Because if it was a, it, all right, if we just took MVP and just like you no, know, every position is four grabs. It'd be a lot more like clear cut of like CMC, Tyreek, right. like, like it, it'd be so much different. But the fact there's a quarterback award and no quarterback is running away with it is a different story. That's right. the only reason why. If someone would have like, I think for even a guy like Tyreek to win it, he has to break the record. And even then, he still he, might not get it. A lot of people are gonna be like, up. they're like, dang man, look at Tua. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> what's his yards? <laughs> bro, like, but honestly, what was sealed it for me, bro? When Cooper if Cooper Cup didn't win it, it's chalk. I'm sorry. If he Triple didn't win it, it's crown. That's not enough. That's not right. MVP worthy. Yeah, it's chalk, bro. I'm sorry. And then performed in the playoffs, like was the like Super Bowl MVP, like I know that don't go into it, but like, come on, man. If he if yeah. he didn't win MVP, it's just chalk. Nobody's gonna do it. Yeah, 